Nowadays, everybody want to talk like they got something to say, but nothing comes out when they move their lips. Just a bunch of gibberish and motherfuckers act like they forgot about drag. <laughs> In basically every language, a word is made up of a bunch of little tiny sounds. They're called phonemes, which are linked together to create one cohesive word. Now, let's take this example here on the dictionary. It's a very simple word, dog, right? Three letters. But if you weren't a native English speaker, you might think that it's dog. In English, we actually have 44 phonemes, even though we only have 26 letters in the alphabet. This makes English a very difficult language to learn for people who are not native English speakers, because just because the letters are there doesn't necessarily mean that that's how they're pronounced. There are rules they changed based on other letters that they're next to. It can get very complex. This word, even dog, is a pretty straightforward word, but it doesn't sound like you would think it sounds. If you've ever looked in a dictionary and seen the phonetical pronunciation, you've probably never used this if you're a native English speaker because we just don't know how to use them. But if you're not a native English speaker, these are very important and helpful to learn how to say a specific word. So let's break this down. This has three phonemes. We've got the D, which sounds D is the sound, D. Okay. We've got the O, which instead of sounding like dog, O, it actually is so this phoneme is uh. And then we've got the G, g. So we've got d, uh, g, dog. That's how it's said. Very strange, right? There are other words that are kind of like this, um, wherein, depending on the letters that they're next to, even the spelling is variant based on specific words. For example, let's take the words thigh and thy. TH is in the beginning of both of them. But because of the I and the Y that follow them, they're pronounced differently. So thigh, if we Isolate just the first phoneme. Thigh is th, thigh, th. That is the phoneme. But in the word thy, it's not. It's not thigh, it's thy. Th, th is the first phoneme, even though it's spelt exactly the same, th, which makes English a very, very difficult language for not only people to learn, but also computers to understand. And let me demonstrate this with a video that I posted on Twitter a few months ago. Something interesting that English speakers don't know is that serious dictation works much better in languages like Spanish because the pronunciation and the intonation is rather static, comma, while English is a more linguistically complex language, period. So, as you can see, it didn't do a very good job. I'm going to say the exact same thing in Spanish just as quickly, and keep in mind I'm not a native speaker, and look how good of a job it does. Algo interesante que los angloparlantes no saben es que el dictado de Siri funciona mucho mejor en idiomas como el español porque la pronunciación y la entonación es bastante estática, como mientras que el inglés es un lenguaje lingüísticamente complejo, punto. Got it 100%. Pretty crazy, right? That's because, like I mentioned, English has 44 different phonemes or sounds for just 26 different letters. And there are no real strict rules on when you use which phoneme when. You kind of just need to know the word. Mientras que en otros idiomas tal como el español, solo hay 24 fonemas y hay reglas muy estrictas que definen cuándo pueden utilizar cada fonema. Very different from English, right? So this software is not going to be as excellent in Spanish, excuse me, as in English as it would in other languages. And I don't think we're coming up on any near point in time where this is indistinguishable from a real genuine recording. But it is pretty crazy how close it can get. And let me demonstrate how. Okay, so I've created an account with Liarbird, which at the moment is under beta and as a consequence free. By the way, from a privacy standpoint, you can delete your data and account at any time. So maybe it's worth a shot to log in and, and give it a go for a fun afternoon. Basically what they need is one minute of audio. That's all they need, which is pretty impressive. And they're going to give you 30 sentences to run through to get that one minute. Now these sentences are pretty absurd. They're not really logical at all. But the idea is that they will get you to pronounce every phoneme in the English language so that they can take your sentences, chop each little word up into its specific sounds, and then reconstruct them based on any sentence after that you want yourself to say. So let's click Let's Start. And we are going to click Start Recording, and it will go. It really ought to be easy, except that right now there's an outstanding bug. It really ought to be easy, except that right now there's an outstanding bug. Okay, good. I'm going to keep going through these. Uh, we're going to click Validate. And now my next sentence pops up. He made us stand and watch him paint for like an hour. It's hard to read them without like a ton of expression in them, but I'm trying. Hopefully this will be... What? 
Hopefully this will actually be a lasting fix to the issue and not just a short-term fix. That was a weird one. <laughs> Three hours later. Turning off gadgets that are not in use can save a lot of energy. Okay, so that's enough. My head's gonna explode. I've been here for almost 40 minutes. <laughs> the program only requires 30 valid recordings, but recommends 100 to 150 and has a maximum of 300 recordings. I now have 153 valid recordings, and so that should be well enough to create a pretty convincing voice. So now I click Create My Digital Voice. I click it again. It may take a few minutes. It says, may take one minute, may take several minutes, dependent on how many recordings you have. I have a lot, so... Uh... Okay, so that really did take a few minutes. Let's try to test my digital voice. Hello, I am Quinn, and I make YouTube videos. Generate, and it takes a couple seconds, and... Hello, oh. I am Quinn, and I make YouTube videos. That's a little higher than I would speak, <laughs> but it's actually, it's not bad. 2018 is going to be a great year for Snazzy Labs. I am going to graduate from university in August, which will allow me to work on tech videos full time. That is really impressive. I mean, it is a little bit monotonous because it is taking me phonemes, but I can totally imagine a scenario where if you had kind of like a shaky cam kind of vibe, where you had like less than stellar audio quality and you were in a different room from the speaker, you could absolutely fake someone saying something real like that. I mean, let's try, I am Quinn Nelson and I assassinated Abraham Lincoln. I am Quinn Nelson and I assassinated Abraham Lincoln. That one is really, wow. That one is really close. I am Quinn Nelson and I assassinated Abraham Lincoln. I am Quinn Nelson and I assassinated Abraham Lincoln. That one is really good. So obviously there are probably certain phonemes that are more difficult to reproduce than others. But I imagine the more data you continue to add, the bigger the word bank, the higher probability of you getting something that sounds good. Something that sounds good. I mean, I've only done this for 40 minutes, but imagine someone like President Trump who has hours and hours and hours and hours of him giving speeches online. I bet you could pull all that stuff down and compile a fake voice within a couple of hours that would sound relatively convincing. That's nuts. Look, I'm a tech geek, so I think that the potential for this software in the future is absolutely incredible and far outweighs the downsides. I mean, imagine a future where you're playing a video game and the protagonist, rather than being some speechless buffoon, speaks with your voice. Or imagine for people that have uh, debilitating diseases that will lose the ability to speak in the future, that they could spend a few minutes recording in software before they eventually lose their voice, and then in the decades to come, they can speak electronically with the voice that they've always had. At the same time, there are downsides. If this technology gets so good that you won't be able to discern what is real from what is not real, that's going to be an issue. And in correlation and in combination with deep fake video, that could be pretty scary. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Do you think this should be regulated and tightly watched over? Or do you think that we should let it happen and see where it goes? Well, folks, that's all from me. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, stay snazzy. Wow. See you later, folks.